I'm Kay, and I'm a late bloomer. If you're a late bloomer like me, and you want to feel like a successful gardener right out of the starting gate, and you have a lot of space, grow zucchini. <laughs> it grows fast, and it's very prolific. Wow, look at that. I've never even seen a zucchini that big. The only thing you have to worry about is getting it crowded together with a bunch of other plants, like I did. If you buy a strawberry seedling and it's this big, and you buy a zucchini seedling and it's this big, the strawberry is going to get that big. The zucchini is going to get <laughs> as big as you let it get. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Things were manageable in early April. My peas and bean plant looked healthy. Here's my cherry tomato. I even had a strawberry ripening. But the wet conditions of mid-April, however, brought powdery mildew, and I started removing infected leaves to keep it under control. On Earth Day, the yellow zucchini delivered a warm welcome. By May 2nd, even though I had cut a lot of leaves, things looked promising. Okay, I'm going to harvest my first zucchini. Wow. Feels like it just wants to come right off. <laughs> That's flawless. That is absolutely flawless. <sighs> Look what I've got. My first yellow zucchini in a little raw goat yogurt with fresh dill from my garden. Don't make the mistake I made and put a bunch of things in one raised bed because what happens is it's too crowded, there's not enough air circulation, and you get powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is host specific, meaning two plants right next to each other might not get it. If everything is crowded, it's probably going to spread. And that's what happened to me. No, it's normal they got a mildew because it's an. Early in the morning is a lot of moisture. Renee said if I cut too many leaves, it could kill the plant. So I took about 20 leaves, removed a few of the smaller plants to give the zucchini more space, and hopefully everything else will survive. By Memorial Day, the zucchini plants were huge, and they were producing. But the clipping of leaves was taking its toll on the yellow zucchini, and the bean plant was suffering, and the powdery mildew was relentless. Kind of nasty. Let's get rid of some of that. It's also a good idea to have a pair of long gloves, because zucchini leaves are kind of prickly. Oh boy. My cherry tomato outgrew my wire cage. Oh, it needs some more support. You don't know these things until you cut back some of the zucchini leaves. <laughs> wow. Look at this. <laughs> I don't think that's going to do much. Boing. Oh, now I think I have my cherry tomato secure. I put three steaks in this thing. <laughs> Who knew a cherry tomato would get that big and heavy? Not me. <laughs> now I can get a better view of the condition of my yellow zucchini. This is not mildew. These spots are normal for some varieties. That one's ready. Ooh. Oh, this is a perfect learning opportunity. Look what we have here. Obviously, powdery mildew is not the only problem I have. This critter turned up too. But I have help with bugs. <laughs> I read online to spray powdery mildew for a few days with a 10% solution of milk in water. So I did, 
milk. It's all natural and you don't have to wear gloves. After only two days, the zucchini leaves look like they can breathe again. Milk may be my new weapon against powdery mildew. The patty pan squash Sophia and I planted on Memorial Day is doing great. I won't be without squash anytime soon. And the best thing about growing zucchini, the neighbors love them and it grows like crazy. <laughs> That's a big zucchini. The sun is out, the planes are flying and I'm signing off. I'm Kay, I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Zucchini grows fast, it's very prolific. <laughs> it's prolific, it goes crazy, and you you get a I'm I have to wait for the crow. I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. <laughs>